day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Uh, uh, side trail. Did anybody see that movie called Knock Knock? Ooh. Knock Knock. Knock Knock. I see. Oh man. Okay. Did I? Well, bottom line is this quick quick story. Is a guy was at home by himself. Family went to vacation, and these two ladies showed up on the door, and they they gained interest into this house because he invited them in, called us up trying to help them out and everything else. And then they eventually they seduced him and slept with him. And then they actually punished him because he gave in to their uh, seduction. Yeah. They they tore his house. They put his they put the picture of what he did on Facebook. And and I mean they they did they ruined everything and left him in the backyard buried with his head up so he could leave, breathe and see and wait for his family to come home to find him and everything that he did. And he said, this is what this is almost like a fatal attraction one. He said, you came to me. You seduced me. I'm a good person. <laughs> you came to me. Why, why, why is I being punished for this? And all they and they they're not even righteous themselves. So sit there and say because you said yes, opposed to saying no. And they that, said, that's uh that's how the devil does it. That's how the devil. It, it was like if you get a chance to see the movie called Knock Knock, but it's yeah. it's like it's just like fatal attraction. Yeah. You, you think that you 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 all that until you give in to sin. And then the devil comes to steal what? Steal, kill, and destroy. It's, it's a great scenario though, because that's what happened in the, in the beginning. Satan didn't make them eat from that tree. Uh -huh. He suggested it. Mm -hmm. He encouraged them and they said, yeah, we eat. Any, any authority or power to move in that physical realm outside of that serpent. And I don't think that serpent had any authority over them. None. None that's why they... there was a seduction. Uh -huh. He didn't have any authority over us either. And uh, and therefore, when they heeded to the words, then that is putting God second. Yes, and and I think that's what we're doing modern day. Most of the time, most of the time. Right. I think I think that scenario is played out all the way up to twenty twenty one. Of has God said? I think you, most people either, I think the Bible said that people have the law within themselves or they had, the, you know, the people with the law and the people had laws, natural laws. And then the, the gospel being preached, we know the will of God. How many people are just saying, no, I don't want to do God's will. I don't want to, I think Bishop, the point is that nobody wants to hear from God because they don't want to receive the instructions of But I think God is every last one of us. We want to be God. We want to be our own God. Yeah, right. Because then, hey, look, now I can do what I want to do. Uh huh. Or look, I can go with the Moses scenario with the children of Israel. Moses, you talk to God, and we're we're listening to you. Cause now, now when I when I when I when I when I can listen to you opposed to God, now I can I can deceive you. I can contend with you. I can contend with him. Didn't they? They contend with him, didn't they? Yeah, they did. The well, preacher told the preacher said he was wrong. And now we're talking about what the preacher said instead of what God said. But you knew better. You knew better. God told you himself that you weren't supposed to be doing it. He did right. <laughs> He told you, and the golden calf came up. Brother, how did that happen, brother? How did the golden calf come up? God already talked to him. He told him the first thing he said, do not put, y'all shall not make an image or likeness. And what the first thing they did, we don't know what happened to Moses. Well, the first thing they did was, Moses, you talk to him, we listen to you. Now, Moses, you've been gone for a little while. I don't know what happened to you. 
Aaron, we been going to cow. How many times? I think that's what we're doing. We heard from God. Adam and Eve heard from God. Cain heard from God. Children of Israel heard from God. Children of the day, 2021, have heard from hearing God daily. That is an indictment. But the good news is, he said, the door is open. All you have to do is go to the door. All you have to do is go to the door. Die daily. Give away, give it to you. Crucify yourself daily. That's the gospel. I think that's a simple truth. That's a simple truth. And now, and, and so therefore, when we get into it, if we do that, then all we have to do, and is this a hard thing, Brother Addison? Verse Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agree. Not onto your own understanding. You yeah. know, it, it, it is hard. Yeah. Um, it's easy, but it's hard. Um, you're taught to get an understanding. Yeah. And get the wisdom of this world. So right. you have some understanding. Yes. yes. And so you're you're supposed to leave all that. Right. right. And trust trust in God. Trust trust in the Lord. Right. Um, right. It takes faith to do that. It yeah. takes faith. It Which means faith. it takes God to do that. I, I, I have a relative that constantly reminds me that God gave us five good senses and he expects us to use them. <laughs> I keep saying, he told us not to lean to our own understanding. I keep saying that, right? But they, they can't receive that. It's like, you know, what do you mean? You got to ask God everything? Right, I do. <laughs> you might have some special secret going on there but, that I don't know about, but I, I come to realization, man, why should I use my finite mind when I can go to an infinite God that has all information, like from the beginning to the end, to find out anything that you're asking me, Lord, what you want me to do? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like that sound like another Cain. That sounds like another Cain Cain factor right there. Because you just said it's like, why you gotta go? Why? Because he is the one that supposed to direct my path, right? <laughs> you know, he know more than I do. He was here when I got here, waiting on me. <laughs> your your senses. <laughs> yeah. Let him direct your senses. He gave hey, you, man. He I'm gave saying. you your life. He, hey, gave, he gave you all. Hey, so man. And he wants to use it. Exactly. Oh, yes. So allow him to use your senses. Come yeah. up now. I think that's the, I think that's the key. Is like the dull of hearing, and the fact is that we really. I think sometimes people don't even want to pray because I'll look at it, some of these. I just made a whole list of all these scriptures here uh, about God knowing your thoughts, right? Yes. And like I said, a lot of cases. The nakedness, that's what I wanted to bring out was we don't want to be exposed. See, I can hide from you, Elder. But I said, I can hide from you. I can hide all my inner thoughts from you. You know what I mean? And I'm just saying that's everybody. Everybody, everybody that's listening will listen to this. We can all hide our thoughts, but look at Jesus showing you that in all these scriptures, God knows your thoughts. Jesus knew your thoughts. You know God knows your thoughts. You know the Holy Spirit knows your thoughts. But it's okay. And see, we need to, I guess I want to leave with that fact is if it's, I'd rather let him see your nakedness. Yeah, I already see it. Well, I mean, the, the, the word of God distinguishes good thoughts from bad thoughts. Yeah. yeah. You know, with thought, which thoughts to reject and which thoughts to accept. So if you lean not to your own understanding, <laughs> right, right, meaning that you have to know which is your understanding and which is God's understanding, exactly. which is the renewing of the mind, which it will show you yeah. your thoughts from His thoughts. Yeah, and at some point those thoughts begin to merge. To yeah, become His thoughts. You you align yourself with Him, and that's what I think yeah. is the form to inhibit. It. Yes. We are, you know, in our configuration, we are, we're in the image of God, but in our thinking, it renewing our mind, renewing the mind. That this might be, you know, with also in Christ. Yeah. That's a process. 
Yeah. It, it really comes to like, I know where I think. It, it, can I say this? No, I'm always, I think that is essential to us receiving our healing. Yes. You have to think like God thinks. Yes. I know what I'm looking at and I know how this feels. Yes. But what would God say about it? By his stripes I'm healed. If the spirit that raised him from the dead is alive in me, it will quicken my mortal flesh. Yes. Regardless of what the condition of my flesh is, his spirit in my flesh yes. is quickening it. It's making it alive. Yes. So now I, I, I want to assure that I'm in alignment with that spirit, that I'm not going to argue with it. Now I should expect yes. this healing to take place. Come on. If I'm aligned with the Lord, I expect that healing should take place. I'm not, I'm beyond hope. Now my expectation is that, you know, I flip the light switch on, the light bulb come on. I go before the Lord with a prayer and I'm healed. He's supposed to fix me. Unless he says otherwise, and I think he's big enough to say that. And so you, the, the default condition for us should be expectation of healing. Exactly.